is the Piper Cub. About 20,000 of these things were built in the 1930s and 40s, and over 100,000 people learned how to fly in these airplanes. But man, is it hard to get in and out of. But don't worry, they solved that. Next came the Cessna 172 Skyhawk. As you can see, this holds four people, a lot more roomy and comfortable. It still handles just fine for flight training, but it goes 120 miles an hour. Well, that's not too shabby for actually getting somewhere, but the bar was raised again, this time by a company called Cirrus. Here we have a Cirrus SR22, almost twice as fast as the Skyhawk, way more comfortable, better avionics, better handling, and better safety too. This airplane can sweat antifreeze, which stops ice from forming on the wings. And a rocket can shoot out of the back, dragging a parachute, which causes the whole airplane to settle safely to the ground in the event of an emergency. So these are all incredible airplanes, each in their own right. But you may notice they all have the same limiting factors, don't they? They all require fuel and they all require runway. But what if they didn't? Five years ago, I got a phone call from a customer asking me what an aircraft would look like if it didn't need any fuel or runway. x whole mission is to predict how any type of airplane will fly. So we went to work, test flying countless designs in the simulator. And from those test flights, estimating how those planes would perform if we built them in real life. That customer was Kyle Clark, the CEO of Beta Technologies. And here's the airplane he built. This is a LEA, an eVTOL, electric vertical takeoff and landing airplane. How does it accomplish these things? Well, it all starts with the battery. Just like a Tesla, it stores them all down in the belly. And there's as many batteries down in this thing as there are in 27,083 iPhones. And you can charge this airplane from a regular old power outlet if you allow 10 days. But don't worry, we have a high-speed charger that'll charge this thing up in 30 minutes. So incredible battery energy is how we escape using fuel. The power from these batteries goes to these rotors and the rotors lift the airplane up vertically. And that's how we obviate the need for runways. But lifting the airplane up vertically comes at a price. Operating rotors is always very energy intensive and helicopters have found this out the hard way. It takes a lot of energy or fuel to hold yourself and hover under a rotor. So, Aaliyah engages the pusher propeller that you see in the back there to push the aircraft forwards. Once that pusher is moving this airplane forwards at 100 miles an hour, air is flowing over the wings and the weight of the aircraft is borne by the wings without the inefficiency of a rotor lifting it. That's what gives this airplane the efficiency of any other airplane you're gonna find in the sky. Now, let's fly to next plane. So we're gonna start off with assigning some joystick buttons. So what I've got here is just a little Logitech Extreme 3D Pro, super affordable and accessible, but I find it's just great to fly Aaliyah. So the first thing you wanna do is go up here to the settings menu and to the joystick tab. Now, hit whatever button you want to use to engage that pusher prop that pushes you forwards. I'm just going to make it this button right here. And when I push this button, I hit the edit right beside the flashing button, and I'm going to type in horizontal. Ah, this is going to be throttle horizontal up a bit. Apply. Now, I'm gonna push whatever button I wanna use to get off the throttle. And I choose throttle horizontal down a bit. And so look what I've done here. We've got the stick, which of course already works, our throttle slider, which will control the lift rotors, and our buttons for throttle horizontal up and throttle horizontal down to control the pusher. All right, let's give it a quick flight. 
We'll start this flight off on Beta's relocatable electric charging pad. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here and I'm gonna hit Command M three times. This shows the flight model forces that X-Plane predicts will come out of this airplane. The next thing I'm gonna do is advance the throttle on the joystick. Advancing that main throttle obviously sends power to the lift rotors and lifts us up off the ground. Now, as I bet you can guess, the next thing I'm gonna do is add power to the horizontal or pusher propeller. I'm gonna hit the button that I have configured to do that and up comes the throttle and the airplane starts accelerating. As the speed builds, I'm gonna gradually bring the nose up to level, maybe even raise the nose a little bit and reduce the main throttle. That reduces the power on the lifting rotors. Eventually, I get that throttle all the way to zero and the lift rotors are completely stowed and we are just flying a regular airplane with a pusher throttle pushing us forwards. We're flying like any other airplane. The difference is we don't need fuel and we don't need runway. So now that you've seen how to take off, the next trick of course is figuring out how to land this thing. And I'm gonna leave that to you.